Hi, my name is Mike Piller. I'm the project geologist with First Atlantic Nickel. Today we're going to take you on a site tour of our Atlantic Nickel property, which lies about 50 kilometers south of the town of Grand Falls, Windsor, Newfoundland. As you can see behind me, we have local power infrastructure as well as road access that provides a good starting point for support on our project. We're leaving here from just from the southern tip of the town of Grand Falls, Windsor. Uh, we're going to follow one of the local forest access roads in uh, about 33 kilometers until we reach the turnoff that goes right into our, our project. Uh, while we're in here, we're going to check on our work crews. Then we're going to take a little uh, bushwhacking tour across, see if we can find some ultramafic outcrops, and we'll have another discussion there on some geology. Behind me we have Majors Contracting that's uh, been doing brush clearing out of the old growth that covered up a lot of the road. This is going to allow us to get larger vehicles in uh, to our property and, and as part of those upgrades they're also going to be installing uh, several small bridges um, that will allow us to get uh, vehicles directly into the end of the road where we set up our base camp. Uh, the next phase of upgrades will be to add in a 14 half kilometer extension uh, off the end of this road which will get us right into the heart of where we want to start drilling. The importance of this is that right now uh, any drilling we had to do would be uh, helicopter supported which is obviously a very expensive endeavor uh, and having the ability to uh, go in with the road will eliminate all of those costs going forward. So I wanted to share this location with you because this is where the Owowright story began for me in 2011 when I began my undergraduate thesis on the Atlantic Lake area of the Pipestone Pond Ophiolite Complex. Uh, right now we're on the, the very northern end of the, of the, the favorable ultramafic trend uh, which extends for approximately 30 kilometers uh, to the south of us. Um, just to sort of orient you in, in space, Atlantic Lake proper is about two kilometers uh, to our south. That's where uh, our base camp is going to be located. Now this area today is, uh, you know, it's going to see more sampling as, as part of a, uh, a designated effort in the future. But for today, we're just going to crack open a couple of rocks and, and show you what we're looking for. Okay, so we've uh, come down off the, the big hill we were on earlier just to get out of the wind and, and have a little sit down and talk about a wowrite formation itself. A wowrite is a very dense and very magnetic mineral that forms as a byproduct of the serpentinization process of ultramafic rocks. Uh, so what that is, is that as, as all water comes through these rocks, the main mineral uh, in ultramafic rocks is olivine, which contains trace, con trace amounts of nickel and iron in it. And as the water breaks down the olivine, uh, it starts forming serpentine and brucite. And there's a secondary reaction that occurs uh, in which the iron that was released uh, from the olivine forms the mineral magnetite. And when that process occurs, it sets up some chemical conditions which promotes the formation of the nickel iron alloy, a wowrite. So when we're when we're looking for a wowrite, which is is going to to be in, at least in a in a trace amount through all of the serpentinized ultramafic rocks, uh, we want to find areas in which uh, water is able to move through the rocks more freely. So. Uh, 
when we look at an outcrop like this, we can see a heavy amount of, of fracturing in here. Uh, that creates space uh, that allows more water to go through, more alteration to continue, uh, and, and release more nickel out of the olivines. Uh, once those olivines break down uh, and you start running out of them in your rocks, those chemical conditions that promoted the formation of the iron nickel alloy uh, and low sulfur conditions will change to where we start seeing talc and carbonate alterations starting to move in through the rocks. Now the thing with alteration is that it'll have a macroscopic uh, effect on how we see the the outcrops. So you know as um, as you may know, we, you know, we first look at these, these sort of typical orangey brown ultramafic outcrops. Then we look for areas that are more sheared uh, than others uh, because that's telling us that you've got more, more water coming through. Um, if we were to advance this alteration too far, the outcrops would stop being this, this nice sort of orangey brown color. It would start becoming reds, even whites. Uh, and that uh, uh, basically tells us that the conditions probably aren't right. So if I were to sample, I'd love to sample something like this because I have a high probability of, of finding more concentrated awarite versus uh, um, a nice sort of fresh or unsheared rock. So as we started following the, the geophysical trends, uh, we started finding the outcrops like this that we were looking for, uh, namely uh, what we've called our big gulp uh, showing and which looks very similar to this. Uh, and so that's what we're, we're in the process of doing is, is sort of working out along, uh, along the trend uh, and trying to find more outcrops, get more sampling. Uh, when we're out here, you want to, on any exploration project, you want to hit as many outcrops as you can. You want to get as many samples as you can. Uh, good science is about the uh, uh, quality, but also the quantity of data points that, that you have.